In preparation for a cryobiopsy using rigid intubation, the following tools are prepared. The team at Torax Clinic Heidelbach is using a rigid 30-degree scope to facilitate intubation. The flexible bronchoscope is inserted through the rigid tube. A flexible bronchoscope with a working channel 2.0 mm or 2.6 mm in diameter that is suitable for the radial EBUS guide sheath can be used. The flexible single-use 1.1 mm cryoprobe is used for this procedure. A dedicated container serves for sample thawing and storage after removal. Ice-cold saline is available to control any clinically significant bleeding. An anti-fogging agent for medical endoscopes can be used. Professor Hart demonstrates his approach to nodule biopsy on a patient with a solid lesion in the right lower lobe, which is suspected of malignancy. After induction of general anesthesia and sufficient pre-oxygenation, the patient is brought into a supine position. Following slight reclination of the head, the 30-degree scope with the tracheoscope slid over its shaft is used for direct visualization of the glottis and entry into the trachea. The tracheoscope remains inside the lumen, while the rigid 30-degree scope is removed again. The ventilator is connected to the tracheoscope. After securing the airway, the bronchoscope is inserted to inspect it. Moderate bleedings are reported to occur in 6% of patients. In a large retrospective multicenter cohort, 3.5% of patients experienced bleeding that required an ice-cold saline or epinephrine injection. The rigid tracheoscope allows for adequate ability to control bleeding in case it occurs. For nodule localization, the guide sheath is inserted through the working channel and advanced to the region where the nodule is located. The radiopaque ring around the tip helps to visualize the distal end on a fluoroscopy image. Then the radial EBUS probe is inserted into the guide sheath. Following sonographic confirmation of placement of the radial EBUS probe in the lesion, a fluoroscopy image serves to illustrate this position in relation to the distal end of the guide sheath, as marked by the radiopaque ring. Then the radial EBUS probe is extracted again while keeping the guide sheath in place. This enables the bronchoscopist to use two fingers to hold the bronchoscope in place, preventing dislodgement of the sheath in this way. This method can be particularly helpful for lesions that are barely visible under fluoroscopy, such as ground glass opacity lesions, small nodules, or such that are located in the beam path along with other dense structures. The flexible single-use 1.1 mm cryoprobe is inserted into the guide sheath. Fluoroscopy is used to bring it into the exact same confirmed position of the radial EBUS probe in the lesion. This means it is advanced just as far in relation to the fluoroscopy marker of the guide sheath as the radial EBUS probe was before. Significant guide sheath deflection can be prevented by using the flexible single-use 1.1 mm cryoprobe. Once the cryoprobe is in position, freezing is activated, in this case for 11 seconds. Professor Hart is holding the guide sheath in position with his right hand to make sure that it can be extracted along with the bronchoscope and maintain its position. The sample is harvested with a rapid movement of the bronchoscope, which is then fluently pulled out of the airway. With the help of the removal tool, the sample is gently removed from the tip of the cryoprobe. Forced removal attempts using forceps or sharp instruments should be avoided to preserve high quality for following examinations such as histology and molecular target testing.
the conditions under which the sample is stored and transported should be defined as per institutional pathologist guidelines, taking into account the desired examinations. The bronchoscopist keeps activating the freezing until the sample has left the patient. Earlier interruption of the freezing could lead to premature thawing induced by the patient's body temperature and risk of losing the sample in the airway. Depending on the clinical setting, technique, and disease state, lower freezing times for cryobiopsy have also been found to enable harvesting of samples adequate for diagnosis while lowering the fundamental risk of bleeding. The bronchoscope is reinserted for inspection and bleeding control. In the event of mild bleeding, Suction is sufficient to evacuate the blood from the airway. Wedging technique and injection of ice-cold saline are able to control moderate bleeding. Only severe bleeding that can cause hemodynamic instability would require interventions that exceed the possibilities of bronchoscopic control. Music